One of the main topics covered on the DMV's knowledge test is safe driving practices. Please join me, Permit Quiz Liz, as I go over the top 20 hardest safe driving practice questions that may show up on your permit test. Not only are we going to cover some really hard questions today, but we'll also provide the correct answers and give clear explanations that'll help you really understand what the DMV is testing you on. Now, while this video is ideal and great and will definitely increase your chances of passing the test, I strongly, like super duper strongly recommend that you read the DMV driver handbook as well. After all, the DMV handbook contains all possible subject matter that might show up on your actual test, so study it. All right, enough small talk, let's do this thing. We'll start with the 20th hardest question and then work our way down to number one. So without further ado, question number 20. When planning to pass another vehicle, you should A, assume they will let you pass if you use your turn signal, B, assume they will maintain a constant speed, or C, not assume they will make space for you to return to your lane. The correct answer is C, not assume they will make space for you to return to your lane never count on other drivers making room for you to return after you pass them. It is your responsibility to make sure that you have a very safe gap in traffic uh, before you attempt to pass another vehicle. Always signal before passing and don't pull out to pass unless you know with 100% certainty that you have enough space uh, to return into that lane. All right, next question, question number 19. You are driving and there are oncoming cars on your left and a row of parked cars on your right. You should steer A, closer to the oncoming cars than the parked cars, B, closer to the parked cars than the oncoming cars, or C, a middle course between the oncoming and parked cars. The correct answer for this one is C, a middle course between the oncoming and parked cars. Sometimes uh, there will be dangers on both sides of the road at the same time. Like in this example, where there are parked cars to the right and oncoming cars to the left, uh, in this case, the best thing to do is to split the difference. So you wanna make sure that you steer a middle course between the oncoming cars and the parked cars. All right, let's move on to question number 18. If the roadway is wet and your vehicle starts to skid, you should A, slow down by shifting to a lower gear, B, slow down by pumping the brakes quickly and firmly, or C, slowly ease your foot off of the gas pedal. Correct answer is C, slowly ease your foot off the gas pedal. If you start to skid, ease off the gas pedal, stop braking, and turn the steering wheel in the direction of the skid. For example, if the back of your car skids to the left, take your foot off of the accelerator and steer to the left until you regain control. You never want to slam on the brakes or start turning the steering wheel wildly while you start while you're skidding. All right, next question, number 17. When sharing the road with a light rail vehicle, A, never turn in front of an approaching light rail vehicle, B, always pass a light rail vehicle slowly on the right, or C, remember that they are loud and move slowly like freight trains. Correct answer is A, never turn in front of an approaching light rail vehicle. There are many ways to safely share the road with light rail vehicles, and that includes never turning in front of an approaching light rail vehicle. Light rail vehicles may be moving more quickly than they appear and are usually not as loud as freight trains. Look for approaching light rail vehicles before you turn across the tracks and only complete your turn if a traffic signal light indicates that you may proceed. Again, never turn in front of an approaching light rail vehicle. Question number 16. If you are unable to see the road ahead while driving because of heavy rain or fog and your wipers do not help, you should A, pull off the road completely until visibility improves, B, slow down and continue driving, or C, turn on your high beams and continue driving. The correct answer is A, pull off the road completely until visibility improves. Heavy rain or fog can present dangerous driving conditions because they significantly impair your visibility. If the conditions are so extreme that you can't see the road ahead, even with the help of your low beam lights and wipers, then pull off the roadway completely. When you do pull off the road, make sure to signal and to pull into a well-protected area where you won't be hit by other motorists who continue to drive. And then you can resume driving when conditions improve and you are able to see the road again. 
All right, now let's see question number 15. When driving in the far right lane of a freeway, you A, should expect merging vehicles at on-ramps, B, must be driving slower than other traffic, or C, must give the right-of-way to merging traffic. Correct answer is A, should expect merging vehicles at on-ramps. On the freeway, the most hectic lane with the most accidents is the far right lane. Now, why is that? Well, because the far right lane is typically where everyone is merging onto and off of the freeway. There's a lot of lane changing and speed variation happening in that far right lane. So we recommend not driving there unless you are preparing to exit the freeway. And when you do drive in the far right lane, always expect and prepare for merging vehicles and on ramps. All right, now let's continue on to question number 14. When driving in traffic at night on a dimly lit street, you should A, drive slowly enough so you can stop within the area lighted by your headlights, B, turn on your high beam headlights to better see the vehicles directly ahead of you, or C, keep instrument lights bright to be more visible to other drivers. The correct answer is A, drive slowly enough so you can stop within the area lighted by your headlights. Make sure to never drive at such a high rate of speed that you overdrive your headlights. If you do uh, drive too quickly at night, your headlights will not light up the road far enough ahead. You will not have enough time to react to the problems that your headlights would normally illuminate. So you wanna be able to um, drive slowly enough to avoid a collision that is within the range of your lights. Next question number 13. When should you yield your legal right of way? A, often, even at controlled intersections, B, never, it confuses other drivers, or C, when it helps prevent accidents. Correct answer is C, when it helps prevent accidents. Don't put yourself in harm's way, even if you feel you have the legal right of way. Yield to other vehicles if it will help prevent an accident, and never assume that other drivers will give you the right of way. Being a courteous driver will help you uh, stay safe from accidents and potential road rage. All right, next question, question number 12. When passing another vehicle, it is safe to return to your lane if you A, cannot see the vehicle directly to your right, B, see the vehicle's headlights in your rear view mirror, or C, have passed the other vehicle's front bumper. Correct answer is B, see the vehicle's headlights in your rear view mirror. Before you return to your driving lane after passing another vehicle, be sure you aren't dangerously close to the car that you have just passed. And one way to do this is to look for the car in your inside rear view mirror. When you can see both headlights in your rear view mirror, you have enough room to return to your driving lane. Now let's see question number 11. At intersections, crosswalks, and railroad crossings, you should always A, stop, listen, and proceed if you cannot hear anything, B, look to the sides of your vehicle, or C, concentrate on oncoming traffic. Correct answer is B, look to the sides of your vehicle. Anytime you come to a place where uh, people may cross or enter your path of travel or one line of traffic meets another, you should look to the left and right sides of your vehicle to make sure no one is coming. Always look to each side at intersections, crosswalks, and railroad crossings. Okay folks, how's everybody doing? We have finally made it down to the top 10 where every question trips up at least one out of every four students. There are definitely some tough ones in this top 10, but we've got your back with all the answers and explanations, so let's keep going. Hardest safe driving practice question number 10. Highways are typically most slippery, A, during a heavy rainstorm in the middle of summer, B, when it first starts to rain after a dry spell, or C, after it has been raining for a long time. Correct answer is B, when it first starts to rain after a dry spell. Many road pavements are the most slippery when it first starts to rain or snow because oil and dust have not yet washed away. If it starts to rain on a hot day, the pavement can be very slippery for the first several minutes. That's because heat causes oil in the asphalt to come to the surface and the oil makes the road slippery until it is washed off. Question number nine, what is the best advice for driving when heavy fog or dust occurs? A, try not to drive until the conditions improve. B, do not drive too slowly because other drivers may hit you. Or C, alternate your low and high beams to improve your vision. 
Correct answer is A, try not to drive until the conditions improve. Now this is similar to a previous question we saw about heavy rain and fog and the lesson is the same. If you cannot see, then don't drive. In fact, the best advice for driving in the fog or heavy dust is just don't. You should consider postponing your trip until the fog or heavy dust clears. However, if you must drive, then drive slowly and use your low beam headlights. Question number eight, flash your brake lights and or turn on your emergency flashers if you A, are temporarily parked uh, in a traffic lane to make a delivery, B, need to warn other drivers of an accident ahead, or C, are backing out of a parking space. Correct answer is B, need to warn other drivers of an accident ahead. If you can see an accident ahead, warn the drivers behind you by turning on your emergency flashers or tapping your brake pedal quickly three or four times. You can also use the hand signal when slowing and stopping, which is this one right here. All right, question number seven, you should increase the distance between your car and the vehicle ahead when you A, are being tailgated by another driver, B, follow a small passenger car, or C, drive slower than the posted speed limit. Correct answer is A, are being tailgated by another driver. You should allow a four second or more cushion when being crowded by a tailgater. By allowing extra room ahead of your vehicle, you'll now be able to slow down more gradually if you need to stop and can avoid braking suddenly. If you brake suddenly while being tailgated, you'll very likely be hit from behind by the tailgater. Now let's see question number six. A car suddenly cuts in front of you creating a hazard. Which of these actions should you take first? A, take your foot off the gas, B, honk and step on the brake firmly, or C, swerve into the lane next to you. Correct answer is A, take your foot off the gas. If a vehicle merges in front of you too closely, first take your foot off of the gas or the accelerator pedal and then brake safely as needed. This helps create space between you and the vehicle ahead uh, without you having to slam on your brakes or swerve into another lane. Slamming on the brakes hard or swerving are usually bad ideas because you may lose control of your vehicle. So just simply take your foot off of the accelerator and that'll instantly slow you down and begin creating a safe uh, space cushion while allowing you to maintain control of your vehicle. And now for the top five hardest questions where about one out of every three test takers makes a mistake. But that won't be you because you're taking notes, right? All right, let's keep on keeping with the hardest question number five. A large truck is driving in the middle of three lanes. You wanna pass a large truck. It is best to pass A, very slowly on the left and move ahead of it, B, very quickly on the right and move ahead of it, or C, quickly on the left and move ahead of it. The correct answer is C, quickly on the left and move ahead of it. Don't linger alongside a truck when passing. Always pass a large truck on the left side without delay, and after you pass the truck, move ahead of it as soon as possible. Not only do you not wanna be uh, hidden in a trucker's blind spot for your own safety, but you also don't wanna block their potential escape route. While you are driving directly next to a truck driver, you make it very difficult, if not impossible, for them to take ev evasive action if an obstacle appears in the road ahead. Question number four, even if you know your vehicle can maneuver a sharp curve at the legal speed limit, you should still slow down because A, there may be a stalled car or a collision ahead that you cannot see, B, you must legally drive below the speed limit on sharp curves, or C, the strong inward pull of your vehicle can be dangerous. Correct answer is A, there may be a stalled car or a collision ahead that you cannot see. You never know what is on the other side of a steep hill or a sharp curve. So you should always assume that there's a stalled vehicle ahead that you can't see. When you come to a blind hill or curve, slow down enough so that you can stop for any hazard if needed. Again, always prepare for the worst by slowing down before the steep hill or sharp curve. Question number three, you see a pedestrian with a white cane at the corner ready to cross the street. The person takes a step back and pulls in his cane. You should A, stop your car for a minimum, I'm sorry, stop your car a minimum of six feet from the crosswalk and wait for the person to cross the street. B, stop, proceed through the intersection, the person isn't ready to cross. 
Or C, honk your horn to let the person know when to cross the street. Correct answer is B, stop, proceed through the intersection, the person isn't ready to cross. Don't wait too long for a blind pedestrian to cross the street. Uh, when a blind person pulls in their cane and steps away from the intersection, this gesture usually means for you to go. Question number two. Other drivers are not making room for you to merge onto a freeway with heavy traffic. If necessary, you may A, drive on the freeway shoulder until a gap appears, B, stop before merging with tr freeway traffic, or C, make room by forcing your way into a small gap. The correct answer is B, stop before merging with freeway traffic. Now, ideally, you want to enter the freeway at or near the speed of traffic. However, the traffic already on the freeway has a right of way and you must yield to them when entering the freeway. Now, if the traffic is so heavy where you can't find a gap uh, to safely merge onto the freeway, then don't force your way in. If needed, you must stop before merging until all traffic has cleared and you can merge safely. And now for the grand finale. Drum roll, please. Thank you. The absolute hardest safe driving practices question on the DMV test. Maybe the hardest safe driving practices question in the whole driving universe. A question missed by more than 40% of devastated and underprepared students. A question so challenging. Okay, I'll stop. The number one hardest question is on freezing wet days, which of the following roadways is most likely to hide spots of ice? A roadways near the top of hills, B, roadways on bridges and overpasses, or C, roadways paved with asphalt. The correct answer is B, roadways on bridges and overpasses. Some road surfaces are more slippery than others when wet and freezing. And bridges and overpasses tend to be the ones that freeze before the rest of the road does because they have cold air chilling the road surface from both above and below whereas other road surfaces are only cold from above. In other words, just think of a bridge as a cold air road sandwich, and hopefully that'll remind you to slow down on very cold days whenever you approach a bridge or overpass. Congrats, you have made it all the way to the end, and now you know that we know that you know that you're better prepared to pass your knowledge test at the DMV. Thanks for watching and please hit all of those like and subscribe buttons and whatnot. We really do appreciate it. And getting your comments always keeps us excited to make more videos. Until then, please stay safe out there, everybody.